Chapter 6 The Crime Scene Lars reached the car before me. I climbed beside him and he stomped on the throttle. We tore down the road, almost fishtailing and hitting trees. We didn't speak until we were about two miles from the house. What the hell happened? I asked. I was hoping you'd tell me, said Lars. Someone kicked open the front door and came after me. Was he her husband? I would assume so. Wipe that, said Lars, handing me the Colt automatic. I used a handkerchief to rub his fingerprints off the gun. Toss it. I rolled down my window and lobbed the gun into the woods. We were moving so fast that I couldn't see where it landed. What name did you use tonight? I can't remember. I, I just made one up. I wonder if the husband coming home and catching you was part of some elaborate setup. It seemed almost too theatrical the way he chased after you. I'm pretty sure he meant to kill me, Lars. Lars slammed on the brakes. What's wrong? We have to go back. Lars turned the car around and sped back to the house. Why? Too many people saw you and the woman together tonight. You'll have to tell the police what happened. You did nothing wrong. A police car passed us doing nearly a hundred miles an hour. We didn't hear the siren until it was past us. Then another police car sped by. We had a hard time remembering where the house was. We drove around for a long time trying to find it. Then I finally spotted it. Two police cars were parked beside the dead man's car. The front door was open, and a stream of light illuminated the three cars. Lars parked behind trees. We got out and walked to the house. The woman, calling herself Vi, came outside with two policemen. Lars and I hid. Another car arrived. That's Detective Sergeant Oakes, said one of the policemen. Oakes got out of his car and joined the others. I got a call about a homicide, he said. Andy Borgen's dead, said one of the policemen. What happened? He was shot in the back, three shells on the floor. His body's in the bedroom. Big gun, little gun, small automatic. Who shot him? Voy don't know. Right, Voy? Yes, I, I have no idea, said the woman. Says she was in the kitchen when it happened, added the other policeman. Was anyone here with you tonight, Voy? Yes, uh, a lawyer uh, n named Ben. Ben who? I don't know his last name. Uh, he works in the Art Fellows Building. She must be talking about Benjamin Lombardi, said one of the policemen. Huh. Why was Benjamin Lombardi here, boy? He was uh, doing some uh, legal work for me. This late? On a Wednesday night? Yes. Then what happened? Andy came home. He thought we were fooling around. He attacked poor Ben. Did Lombardi shoot Andy? I don't know. I was in the kitchen. Andy was very drunk. He took a knife from the drawer and went after Ben. I was about to run out the back door when I heard the gunshots. Someone used a chair to smash the window in the bedroom, said one of the policemen. That's where the body is. Must have been Lombardi escaping. Voy, did you hear the window break before or after you heard the gunshots? I don't remember. It all happened so fast. Did you find the gun? Oakes asked one of the policemen. Not yet, he answered. Voy, do you know where the gun is? No. We'll have to call the coroner. O'Brien, take Vi back inside and make her a pot of coffee. See if you could sober her up. Flee it is. Show me the body. Then I'll make the call. Everyone went inside. Who's Benjamin Lombardi? whispered Lars. I have no idea, I said. I wonder who called the police. There's a house further up the lane, I said, pointing. The lights are on. It looks like someone is in the window. Oakes and the two policemen came outside. They stood near Lars and I. What do you think, boys? asked Oakes. It's pretty obvious what happened here tonight, Detective Oakes. There's a bottle of Seagram's VO on the table. The radio is playing soft romantic music and Vi's shoes are beside the couch. They weren't playing tiddlywinks, detective, added the other policeman. I know Benjamin Lombardi. I see him every Sunday at mass. He seems like a really nice guy. He's got a lovely wife and ten well-behaved kids. I can't believe a guy like him would be out here in the boondocks, missing around with a woman like Vi Bogan. I drive by this house all the time, detective. I'm not one to spread rumors, but there's always someone here when Andy Bogan's out of town, 
What does Bogan do for a living? When he was breathing, he worked for the Boston, Hartford and Erie Railroad. Did you see the front door? Bogan nearly kicked it off the hinges. Lombardi probably soiled himself when he saw that big galoot coming after him. I wonder what Foy did with the gun. Stashed it somewhere. We'll find it, detective. A man approached on the road. One of the policemen shined his flashlight on him. Who are you? yelled the policeman holding the light. I live next door, said the man. I was the one who called the police. Tell us what you saw and heard. I heard a car screech. I looked out my window and saw Andy Bogan come home. He's usually gone Wednesday nights. Vi had someone in there with her. I saw them go in about ten minutes before Bogan came home. Bogan got out of his car, looked in the window, kicked open the door and ran in. Then I heard yelling, screaming and gunshots. Did you see anyone leave the house? Yeah, after the gunshots I heard glass break and then I saw a shadow dash across the road. Uh, the shadow got into a car and sped away. I, I didn't see the car before because I was looking at the house. Do you remember what kind of car it was? Asked one of the policemen. No, it was too dark. I only saw the taillights disappear. A black van arrived and parked next to the police cars. Oh, Here's the coroner. Flaherty, get a statement from the neighbor. Come with me, sir, said Flaherty, walking the neighbor into better light. O'Brien, get back inside and keep an eye on Voy. See if she gives away the gun's location by continuously looking at something. Sure, detective. O'Brien went inside the house. The coroner approached Oakes. Fancy meeting you here, detective, he said. We got a homicide, doc, said Oakes. Who? Andy Bogan. How? Three bullets in the back. Wife do it? Yep. How'd it happen? Bogan came home and caught her on the couch with Benjamin Lombardi. The lawyer in the odd fellow's building? Yep. I know Lombardi. He seems like a decent guy. Bogan caught the missing around on the couch. He went after Lombardi with a knife. Lombardi somehow got out the window. Is that when the wife shot Bogan? Yep. She was standing behind him in the hallway. Find the gun? Not yet. Lombardi is a small guy. He must have been petrified seeing that bulbous, gap-tooth ogre come charging at him with the knife. You ain't kidding, Doc. Another car arrived. A man holding a camera and tripod got out. Inside, yelled Oakes, pointing to the door. Patrolman Flaherty will show you the body. The man hurried in the house. I better get to work, said the coroner. I gotta get up early tomorrow. I'll join you in a few minutes. The coroner went inside. Oak stood there alone. He lighted a cigarette. A policeman came outside and joined him. Are we bringing her in tonight? asked the policeman. Yep, said Oakes. Sooner or later she'll have to tell us what really happened here. It looks pretty bad for her, don't it, detective? It does. I better call the county TTA and get the ball rolling. Oakes tossed his cigarette. Oh, I'll take her back with me when I return to the station. You guys find the gun yet? Nope. What about Lombardi? You want one of us to pick him up tonight? No, we'll grab him in the morning. I don't want him around, Vi. Who knows what tale they'll concoct if they get a chance to talk. Oakes and the policeman entered the house. A few minutes later... Oakes escorted Vi Bogan outside and put her in the back of his car. Then he sped away.